at the Mobile World Congress. So who are you? My name is Raj Singh. I'm the general manager for the wireless broadband group at Cavium. So what does Cavium do? So Cavium is a semiconductor company that provides semiconductors for infrastructure, for the wireless RAN, for wireless core, now small cells. Um, about 60% of all shipping uh, 3G and 4G macro base stations use Cavium Silicon. That's a lot. It's a lot. You're the leader. We are the leader in this market space. Who's number two? We don't know. We, we don't, don't know. care. <laughs> we don't care. So what's over there, for example, on the on the side? You are sure. you are talking about. Uh, uh, so what are you talking about here? We're providing scalable solutions all the way from a very very small cell. This this thing, as you can see, is only five and a half inches square, and we're doing this as a reference board for our customers, and it supports 64 users without a power supply, directly feeding power over the Ethernet. So what, the, what does it uh, signal out? What LTE. Is it? It's an LTE small LTE, cell. LTE, uh, uh, what do you call those? Uh, it's, a, it's a small cell. So your devices yeah. can connect. You know, if you're inside a building, you're inside a shopping mall, you don't get a good signal. This is designed to, 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 to get you a, a boost to your signal. Is it uh, is not for consumer use or? Yes, we have. Uh, this can go as low as eight or sixteen users and as high as one hundred and twenty-eight users. So, how would it work in terms of uh, uh, spectrum allocation and all that? Because so, only the company that has the license would yes, be able to use it. Yes, of course. So, we, we can provide it in any spectrum band that's part of the LTE official standard. Uh, so. Everything you know, we currently have one, three, four, thirteen, seventeen, twenty-five, whole, and a whole bunch of TDD bands as well. And but of course, operators have to own the license to do that. So the number of bands is, carries on expanding, including a new one, thirty-five, uh, three point five gigahertz. Uh, so is this a FLTE fem to cell? It's a LTE small cell. Small cell. So whatever that definition is, and of course, different people have different definitions. Our view is small cells are really not about how many users, which is interesting, but what the cell radius looks like. You know, micro base stations have cell radiuses of several kilometers, several tens of kilometers sometimes. Small cells have cell radiuses of a few hundred meters. Do you show some hardware? Yes, of course. Here we have the same thing. So this is transmitting here okay. to these commercial UEs. And <coughs> this is an application server with a, a full core network running on it. And it's transmitting these, these, these videos across. So it's showing that it can stream a whole bunch of uh, 1080 or high yeah. resolution at yeah. the same time? Same time. So, uh, since this is just the first time you show it, or? Uh, for this form factor, which is a very small yeah. form factor, yes, it's the first time you show it. So, how soon is it everywhere? So, we market? don't produce boxes, we produce the silicon, but we do provide reference designs to our OEMs to, to build, and we have a number of OEMs taking this to market and doing trials with operators. So, can we go over here? In the, so, here in your, uh, in your prospectus, you talk about there's something about 64-bit ARM. Yes. Uh, what's going on here? What are you so, using it for? Uh, two years ago, um, Cavium entered into a license agreement with ARM, where we did an architectural license with ARM. So just like on MIPS, which is our bread and butter for many years now, we don't buy compiled cores, either from MIPS or from ARM. We build our own cores by hand, very, very optimized. So typically, you know, we'll be 60 to 70% smaller, a third of the power, uh, very, very efficient, much higher speeds, and a very different internal memory architecture and, and, and uh, interconnect. So we are planning to ship our first 64-bit ARM processor uh, later this year. So to put this in perspective, we believe that this will outpace best-in-class Xeon processors from Intel at a fraction of the power budget and a fraction of the, 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 the heat dissipation. So it'll be faster than Intel and much slower power? Really faster? Yes. How, how, how can you be so sure? <laughs> <laughs> we spent three years building simulations to make sure that it is. 
That sounds awesome. Yes. So and we have a lot of very excited customers saying, as soon as you have it, I want it in my lab. So um, where does this go, this chip? It, so the first chip is designed to go in the data center and for cloud RAM, for wireless. So is it for like a server? Yes. So or is it for it's, it's base for a, stations? So it's for a server. It can also be used for base stations. And in particular, as the move goes to putting the, the radio access network in the cloud, at least from L2 and above, then it can, it's a very, very good companion for our radio access chips and the remote radio heads to, 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 to talk to the L2 and thing which, which will be common scalable. Um, so has a KVM uh, worked with ARM before? Yes, of course. We have what have you been doing before with ARM? Uh, well, we've done you know, 30 bit processors before in our consumer business. Um, but for the 64 bit, we decided that the way to do this was to do exactly what we did for MIPS, which was to build a custom core and a, in a particular process geometry. And that gives us all the benefits that we see on a MIPS side, which is why people use us with almost every embedded application there is. So let's, uh, can we go down to the media area? Uh, just by, by the way, what, what are all these? Okay. So this is our MIPS processors. These are actually 32 core processors on, on this today. <coughs> and this particular blade, as you can see, is, is a 4G blade. And it's uh, shipping? It's, 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 it's not ours. It's a customer's a blade, cus but it's, customer's it's shipping, yes. And it's, uh, this is a diagram? This is a diagram of a chip. It's a uh -huh. 70 and 71XX, and the latest generation Optium 3 chips which have virtualization, and these in particular are, are designed to do things like um, you know, Wi-Fi enterprise access points, uh, line rate 11 AC, both in and out, uh, which, uh, so we can, we have enough processing power in these chips to do one gigabit over the air and write one gigabit to a disk at the same time, nice. which nobody else in the industry can do. Nobody that. else. Nobody. And all, all your partners there? Yes, many, many partners, as you can see, ODMs, AMC and HCA boards, hardware debuggers, many operating systems, and lots of software stacks. All right, so what are you showing over there? Okay. Um, there. You know what the remote control is, so this is the media processors yes. so area. Yes, media processors. So we're showing an OTT application. So this is the IPTV set-top box. Okay. Okay. What so is the processor inside then? It, it, it is a camion processor uh, that we we have a decode ability to be able to decode H.264 at 1080p 60 in real time, and it's using uh, uh, ARM cores again. For, for the CPUs, it has a very low latency video pipeline to go with that. Since when is this on the market? Uh, well, this particular one is brand new. It's brand new? Yeah. Uh, it's previous generation ones we've had for a while, but we do the entire software stack. And so uh, there's a whole uh, UI layers and uh, ha it's a graphics accelerated so also? In France, for example, um, the operator Numericabel is, is shipping a box made by Netgear using our chip in volume in, in Paris and now just rolling out in the south of France as well. Do you do any Android support and yes, stuff like that? Yes, this, this actually supports Android uh, 4.3 and so. All right, all right, so uh, looking forward to, uh, let's, let's maybe see if there's some... Uh, uh, what are you showing here? So this, Charlie, tell us about Turbo DPR. So deep packet, um, Deep packet inspection is very important for maintaining quality of service because you want to, as a as a as a operator or a network provider, you want to be able to quantify what kind of data is coming through the network, so you can provide different levels of service. To you know, voice is probably more important than video, and video is probably more important than text files. So di different levels, and and in order to be able to do that. We have hardware built into all our Octium chips and the new ARM chip that does hardware accelerated deep packet inspection. So it's uh, kind of like statistics of what's going on? Well, or? it actually... We can, we can actually identify what's going through in the packet. So if you look at this screen, for instance... Uh, you can see, uh, it'll actually show you... 
sh show you what each, what both my IP address and also my by 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 by, by uh, function, what applications are what running. What type of traffic? So we've got Yahoo Mail going through, um, TCP, um, you know, TFTP you data, see here, eBay, Google Flash, yeah. Google Flash. Well, whether it's Flash or okay. somebody's going to Google or to Yahoo, so you can decide what priority in the network you want to assign to various various tasks. You could identify the traffic within the network, and also we'll do malware. Um, detect any uh, intrusions and you know is this action. solution something you would run all the time on every chip or is it only sometimes to do some this, things this solution is what we're showing here is a hardware and a software solution so it's a full stack for the DPI so it's, it's running on the auction it's using the DPI engines but uh, we've got the whole application around um, the, the chip of which we call turbo DPI so when you do DPI does it uh, use resources I mean it's been dedicated for doing this or it, we've also got some other overhead I mean this is one application but we're not running on every single core uh, so uh, a customer could take this turbo DP, DPI stack um, use it as is, is intended to and also add their own software and own value add onto the chip nice so thanks a lot and uh, so Cavium is going to do lots of things in the near Ca future. Cavium is the, one of the fastest growing companies uh, in the semiconductor business. Our compound annual growth rate for the last five years is more than 33%.